In the past, this coastline was beyond where you see that leaning tree. We thought we had more time. And then within the last two years, so much erosion has taken place that we can now see the roots of this tree. As a coastal barrier island with absolutely no elevation, we take sea level rise very seriously. Hurricane Irma, for instance, this entire area was flooded severely. Tide gauges along the southeast and Gulf coasts have measured accelerating rates of sea level rise, unprecedented in recorded history, and far faster here than the global average. But exceptional sea level rise in the southeast is also met by exceptional expanses of salt marsh. Our salt marshes here in Georgia are really some of our first line of defense. They really help to protect those inland communities that live behind them. Across the region, these unassuming wetlands can absorb enough flood water and wave energy to prevent billions of dollars in storm damages every year. And as one of the first states to protect its coastal marsh from development, Georgia still hosts nearly a third of all salt marsh on the eastern seaboard. But squeezed between rising seas and coastal development, salt marsh is losing ground. Our marshes may be able to adapt up to a certain point. It's after that point that it could be a challenge for those marshes to keep up with sea level rise and we may see some significant loss. The resilience of our communities depends on thriving salt marsh. And thriving salt marsh depends on coastal communities to protect the spaces it needs to adapt. If this marsh was connected, you wouldn't have this erosion like you see. So our intention would be to remove these pipes, put in a, a, a modern box culvert, bottomless so that you have aquatic connectivity, and then reshape the bank of this with the living shoreline so that as the seas rise and we get high tides, this marsh can, can grow. This would be one of the projects that we have for the Coastal Resilience Fund. Since 2018, the National Coastal Resilience Fund has issued over $600 million in federal grants to build capacity for infrastructure projects that strengthen resilience for both human communities and coastal habitats. The Seabrook Village Foundation is beginning another of these projects to protect a community center with a living shoreline. In this case, restoring a gentle slope with salt marsh vegetation to buffer against erosion. What you see in this picture is what will take place with a living shoreline, how the marsh will grow in along with the native plants and oysters. But what's special about this is this is how I remember it. That's what it looked like before. We're hoping this project is like a great example, especially with minority communities, underserved populations, being part of the conversation and creating the solutions. To some people, 400 feet along the Georgia coast seems like a drop in the bucket. But to me, this smaller project is laying a foundation and a blueprint. It's just the first step in all of our work that we plan to do. This is just the beginning, it's just the beginning. About 20 miles up the coast, back at Tybee Island, another small stretch of shoreline has local plans and federal funding for more resilient infrastructure. We're right here, right now, in between these two docks. We would elevate that road about 12 to 18 inches and then put in the living shoreline and then all of this marsh is allowed to migrate up as the seas rise. This section is really just a proof of concept because if this works and we see how effective it could be in allowing marsh migration, our intention would be you take this the entire way up the island. In that context, the complexity of this project is important because we, you know, we better learn how to do this with individual homeowners and private property. Collaborating with agencies, municipalities, and willing residents, local leaders are taking the initiative to adapt, securing funds for projects that build community resilience by protecting salt marsh.
I'm drawn back to a proverb that I grew up with, little by little, a bird builds its nest. What we're doing here is really merging and meshing together some different components from various members of the community, from different organizations that might not have known each other, but we all have one thing in common. This area is our protection, but we have to protect it as well.